Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Brunswick here, and today I have a story to share with you. So, I um I haven't been able to play the games I've wanted to recently because I'm juggling work and the addiction that I happened to bring up last time I was here speaking with you. I'm getting help. So this is something I figured I'd let you guys in on because it seems a lot of people think that I'm funny. <laughs> uh, so I figured, you know, I will share more with you. And as long as people like it, I might as well talk about it. Let's get things covered first. I have this hat on because it is colder than a bitch in this room. This is cold. It's an old house. The colonists who built it never heard of insulation. So, you can, you can pretty much figure out that all these doors and everything... Doors. Windows! Windows um, aren't really sealed right. Some of you may know that Mr. Brunswick also works part-time security because I need money. That being said, I encounter some strange things in this line of work. Things that I I don't think I would have otherwise seen or had to interact with. Yesterday, I was outside a plant, a, um, an auto plant, if you will. Name and location will not be disclosed. So, this area has not been renovated yet. It's in a, it's in a kind of bad part of town, which is probably why they want security there. But I digress. I had no idea it was going to be... I had no idea that it was going to be so dilapidated. I've worked at some pretty creepy and, and badly maintained locations. Not because of the company I work for, but I guess maybe the companies who hire them. I gotta say, this place, this place takes the cake. By far. So I arrive, after driving in circles, trying to find the place that I was told about. I was told that I need to, I need to take position inside of this guard window. I, I get there, and I can't find the place. And then I happen to look near the address I was given. Because I wasn't given a house number, I was given the street. And I look in there, and I'm just, oh god. Picture just this gravel road, right? Gravel with weeds growing through it and shit. Cracked cement on the sides. This one guard booth that's skewed slightly to the side. It looks like the roof will fall off. One of those things that block the traffic on the road. Going, In the wind, trees just kind of like come over it like a canopy, but they're dead trees because the atmosphere would not be complete without dead trees blocking out the sun, the only kind of light that I would have. I wanted the sun to shine on that really dark area. <laughs> Bad. Because um, it was still early morning and it was pretty dark. I would regret wishing that later on in the day. I'll get to that. So I walk into this guard booth. I didn't expect much, but my god. There were holes in the ceiling, there were panes missing. There was rat shit caked to the walls. I didn't know rats would do that. But, you know, nothing is perfect and I have to make money. So, suck the fuck up, Bruns. And that's what I did. As the day went on, I happened to notice other things that were very wrong with my location. Because of the horrible slant that this guard booth I was in was on. Because it was literally on its last leg. No pun intended. It was literally... The roof was at such a slant. I... Rain will probably miss the, all the holes in the roof and just fly right off this thing. It is so steep. 
the roof no longer blocked the sun. And the sun came in because it was tilting off to the side, came in and stopped right at my chest. So the whole time I'm in this guard booth, just trying to not have my eyes bake out of my skull. And it was terrible. I couldn't see people coming in. I couldn't see people leaving. I didn't know what was going on. Half the time I'd go out there to stop a car that wasn't even there. I was seeing shit. Once it hit about noon, though, everything was okay. The sun was above me, and the only thing I had to worry about was the light shafts coming through the holes in the fucking roof, reminding me of all the dust and creepy shit floating through the air in that fucking abandoned building of a guard shack. But that was not the weirdest thing that happened to me. Nor was it the strangest, nor was it the most concerning. Things got a little weirder as the day went on. Being a security guard isn't really 9 to 5. So, it's like duskish. Um, for winter, so you know, like 5 to 6. I see this guy. This, like, really old, crusty dude. Like, whatever, man, to each his own. You're doing whatever you're doing, I get it. But, like, crust. Like, this guy was leaving a trail of flakes behind him. Like, I thought this guy had a box of cereal open behind him as he went past, dropping fucking frosted flakes in a line behind him. So, I came to think that this man might be homeless. I was like, well, you know, I have some Wendy's here, and I'm not gonna eat it, and I'm not exactly starving. So I figured, you know, let me see if this guy wants some food. Okay, so... This is where it is weird. I look at the man, I see him there, he went off to the side on his bicycle. But I didn't look exactly where he went until I was picking up the burgers to bring to him and offered him some warmth inside of the shack. Because even though it was lopsided, I forgot to mention it had a heater. The heater worked great! I mean, the heat escaped pretty quickly through all the fucking holes. But, you know, made me feel better. <laughs> So the guy was was over over by the buildings next to me, and um, I I, th I thought maybe he was digging through trash or, or whatever it was that over there because that place is like kind of a construction site. And so I picked the burgers up and I look at him and I open my mouth and I realize what this man is doing. Now I didn't quite understand what I was seeing because when you see something that's shocking to you, it takes a moment for your brain to register what you're watching. Then once you realize what you're watching is what you had feared you were watching, realization sets in and then you're now in shock. So after all that happened, I was now in shock watching this man smear feces on the wall. Now, I consider myself a free-thinking individual. I think that when most situations arrive, I'm the go-to guy. I know what to do. I can keep a cool head. Most of that goes out the window when you see a man that's double your age smearing shit on the wall. While holding eye contact. It was like some kind of strange mating ritual. Something that, like, a peacock would do. And try to impress me with all the finger painting shapes that he could make on this unused billboard that was next to me. Now, mind you, this is strange enough watching a man that could probably be my grandfather smear his own fecal matter on the wall. It went on for a while. I tried to ignore him. I... I tried to pretend this wasn't happening. And, you know, there's a couple things that go through your mind. Should I talk to this individual? Should I call the police? Should I run away and... I don't know. I don't know. I just chose to be very passive about it and pretended I didn't see what was happening. Hard to do when the man's looking me right in my eyes while I'm trying to eat my salad from Wendy's. All ideas of giving this man my food went out the window because I was so taken aback by his actions. And what just was weird to me was he looked so proud. He was so proud and... What do you do? What do you do? You are looking at me right now like, What's wrong with you, Brunswick? Well, what the fuck would you have done if your fucking grandpa showed up at your fucking job at your workplace and started finger painting with bodily fluids?
So as this goes on, I realize, you know, I probably can't not say anything. Um, I can't really go over on the property there and tell them to get off the property because that's not the place I'm guarding. Um, and I didn't want to outright call the police because maybe the guy's, you know, out of it. Being out like this in the cold. So I called my manager. It was hard enough explaining to him what was going on. But things just spiraled out of control. They just got worse. So my manager drives from the main site over to my part of the plant. And he gets out of his car, comes over, and he's like, where, where is it? Where is it happening? He's like, over there. Over there. So he goes over there and talks to the guy. And I, I'm in earshot, mind you. I stayed in the booth. I was gonna say I kept the window cracked, but it didn't fucking matter that I did because there's like no doors and no fucking windows. But anyway, I'm listening to the exchange. Like, what is he gonna say to this guy? What is he saying? My manager walks up to me. He's like, is this your shit? If that question wasn't more asinine, it was the man's answer who looked at him with his fingerless gloves and his hands that obviously were all over that wall and he looks at him dead in the eye and says no my manager comes back and looks at me and says he said he didn't do it i'm like are you fucking kidding me i, I watched it he's like well i guess i have to call the police i was like all right you know he's doing it not me I, how do you what do you do what do you do i just want to give the man some food and offer him shelter while I was working that shift. He wanted to paint the town brown. So the police arrive and they decide to park near the guard shack. And they're debating on how to approach this man. Everything from being worried to having to restrain him if things go awry and getting um, dirty to what do we do if he runs well while they're talking i watch this man pull up his pants because you know when he was painting he, he got while they're talking he's not gonna stick around apparently because this guy got on his bike didn't clean up and just left left so I'm I'm sitting in the shack for the last couple hours of my shift by that time the police had left and the uh, the manager had walked away I'm just sitting there I keep stealing looks over at his masterpiece and just what am I what am I doing with my life who can say that they've seen these things and then experienced these things? What goes through a man's head? How low, how far do you have to fall? To, to start finger painting. Oh, the word and the visualization. You guys can imagine it. I saw it. I saw it. And it was real. It was real. I had to look at it the entire day. And I still felt like that man had his life more together than mine. I also just noticed that I was winging my beer around. I have um, I haven't edited it yet, obviously. Um, so I, I'm not advertising it. It's delicious. But even so, I figured that it was um, enough of an odd occurrence to speak to you about. And I, I hope that you feel as incredulous about it as I do, because this is one of the top ten strangest things that has happened in Mr. Brunswick's life. Okay? 
you're welcome. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like these kinds of things, let me know. I will do more of them. The first one that I put up received a lot of love. And uh, if, <laughs> if you guys like it, who am I to deny it? I will fucking, I'll mix it up with the stuff that I usually do. Um, I can't do it every day. And uh, yeah, that, that'll be that. So if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button. It helps a lot. Let's me know what's good. And let me know what's up. And fuck the phone. Maybe even subscribe. You'll always get more content. And subscribing helps me hit goals. Helps me move forward. Grow. Get better. Alright? I'll be sitting right here at my computer thinking of the next video for you guys. And I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.